artificial skin that can feel pain. The new fish scale explained. Robots in space. And finally, tic-tac-toe playing robot. Stick around to find out more in this episode of News Bites. Hello and welcome to Advanced Ingenuity Labs, your insight into technology. I'm your host, Aisha Sharif, and this is News Bites, where we cover innovative developments in the latest technologies. Replicating the instantaneous and severe reaction to pain has long been a goal of academics who hope to create lifelike prosthetics and improve skin grafts. Researchers at Australia's Royal Melbourne Institute of Technology have succeeded in developing artificial skin that responds to painful stimuli, just like real skin, which could lead to important steps towards both intelligent machines and human prosthetics. They believe this is the first such device that can replicate the feedback loop of painful stimuli in unprecedented detail. PhD researcher M.D. Atur Rahman says we've essentially created the first electronic somatosensors replicating the key features of the body's complex system of neurons, neural pathways, and receptors that drive our perception of sensory stimuli. While some existing technologies have used electrical signals to mimic different levels of pain, these new devices react to real mechanical pressure, temperature, and pain, and deliver the right electronic response. It means our artificial skin knows the difference between gently touching a pen with your finger or accidentally stabbing yourself with it, a critical distinction that has never been achieved before electronically. The artificial skin uses three separate sensing technologies that the team has been developing. Their prototype devices combines stretchable wearable electronics, temperature reactive coatings, and electronic memory cells that mimic the way the brain recalls and retains information. These three technologies enable the skin to react when pressure, heat, or pain reach a certain threshold. Lead researcher, Professor Madhu Baskaran, says, we're sensing things all the time through the skin, but our pain response only kicks in at a certain point, like when we touch something too hot or too sharp. No electronic technologies have been able to realistically mimic that very human feeling of pain until now. Our artificial skin reacts instantly when pressure, heat, or cold reach a painful threshold. It's a critical step forward in the future development of sophisticated feedback systems that we need to deliver truly smart prosthetics and intelligent robotics. With further development, the stretchable artificial skin could be a future option for non-invasive skin grafts, where the traditional approach is not viable or not working. As the holiday season steadily approaches, it is imperative to be vigilant when opening emails. Phishing, a practice where black hat hackers send emails that appear to be from an acquaintance or a trustworthy institution, is one of the most prevalent types of cybercrimes. A phishing email can entice users with a variety of scenarios, from the promise of free gift cards to package or shipping updates, or even an urgent email from your boss. In an effort to train employees, many businesses will often have their IT security team generate and send fake phishing emails within their organization. This training is used to teach the employees to be alert and to recognize the characteristics of actual phishing emails. To determine if the phishing training is working, the IT security team determines how often the users click on the fake phishing emails. High click rates are bad because it means users failed to notice the email was a phishing attempt. The National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, has developed a tool to help businesses train their employees to not click on links within increasingly sophisticated phishing emails. This tool is called the Fish Scale, and it quantifies an email's likelihood of tricking users. 
The scale allows security teams to evaluate the quality and sophistication of phishing attacks in order to better understand their phishing vulnerabilities. This information will also help you as a user to identify such phishing attempts. The Fish Scale uses five common elements that are found in phishing emails and are rated on a five-point scale. The five elements in the rating system are one, errors, often spelling and or grammar and other anomalies and inconsistencies. Two, technical indicators, such as email addresses, hyperlinks, and attachments. Three, visual presentation indicators, any branding, logos, design, and or formatting. Four, language and content, such as generic greetings and lack of sign or details, or the use of deadlines and threatening language. And five, common tactics, which include offers that are too good to be true or time limited, or the sender poses as a friend, colleague, or authority figure, etc. With the FISH scale, security teams can get a better understanding of why staff can spot phishing lures in some emails and not in others. The overall score is then used by the phishing trainer to help analyze their data and rank the phishing exercise as low, medium, or high difficulty. Also, it helps businesses make their phishing exercises more effective. The FISH scale provides a new method for IT security professionals to better understand their organization's phishing click rates and ultimately improves training so their organization's users are better prepared against real phishing scenarios. If you enjoy this video and find value in our content, you can help us by sharing it with others. Also, leave a comment as we want to hear from you and consider liking the video and subscribing to our channel. You may also click the notification bell if you don't want to miss our upcoming videos. To stay informed about our upcoming training courses and camps here at Advanced Ingenuity Labs, visit our website at advancedingenuitylabs.com and sign up for our email notifications. We have shared in numerous episodes of News Bites how robotics is altering certain aspects of our lives across various fields. Now let me share with you robots in space. Space robotics startup Gitai and the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, JAXA, are teaming up to produce the world's first robotics demonstration in space by a private company. The new agreement under the JAXA Space Innovation Through Partnership and Co-Creation Initiative aims to demonstrate the potential for robots to automate the processing of specific tasks aboard the International Space Station, the ISS. According to JAXA's website, the organization's goal for this project is to identify tasks in space that will require robotization develop robotics technologies that will carry out the tasks and provide services using robots. JAXA will be supporting Gitai's activities through technical cooperation while aiming to expand their knowledge on space-based robotics. Currently, Gitai is conducting autonomous control and automation testing in a replica of the Japanese experiment module Kibo. In 2021, a robotic arm will be used in the Bishop Airlock module on the ISS to exhibit its ability to complete various tasks, including operating switches, plugging and unplugging cables, and assembling panels. Based on the technical data collected, they will be able to provide information on how these technologies can be utilized in new space missions as well as in telemedicine, disaster rescue, and other ground missions. At Advanced Ingenuity Labs, we share with you innovations in robotics and other technologies as an inspiration for what we are all capable of creating. As all of us are getting a little too familiar with the insides of our homes, we would like to share with you a fun and successful project that was recently built within the robotics community. A creator known as 3D Printed Life has built a Raspberry Pi-powered AI robotic arm that plays tic-tac-toe 
and it always wins. The robot's body was designed in CAD and then the parts were 3D printed. Using a custom circuit board, 3D Printed Life began programming the AI's brain. The robot starts the match by drawing the board and makes its first move. The camera takes pictures of the paper and then compares the recent picture to the previous, looking for the square that contains the most differences. Afterwards, the AI makes a calculated move. According to 3D Printed Life, it's not actually that smart of an AI as it only consists of three functions. However, this is an example of 3D Printed Life brilliantly employing Occam's Law of Parsimony, the problem-solving pr principle that entities should not be multiplied without necessity. If the match begins to get too close for comfort, the robot will try and distract the opponent in order to declare victory. I encourage you to visit his channel to not only see Tobot in action, but to also see his other 3D printed robotic projects. I'll include a link to his channel in the description. Let me know in the comments what projects you've created while spending so much time at home. That's it for this episode of News Bites. As always, if you enjoyed this video and want more, leave me a comment and consider liking and subscribing. See you next time.